Good morning, Faith Church. Welcome to 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. We're thrilled you join us on this transformative journey. During these 21 days, let's come together seeking unity, spiritual growth, and connection.
Can we just take a moment and just lift up our hands to the Lord? You are here this morning to pray. You're here this morning to pray. You're here this morning to, to meet with the Lord. You're, you're here because he is, he's been calling you from deep into deep. You're here. You're not here just for a, a service. You're not here for, uh, for an experience. You're here to experience the living God. So can we just start off this 21 days of prayer meeting together with just lifting our voice where you are right now. Begin lifting your voice. I know it's early. That's okay. Jesus rose early in the morning to meet with his father. Can we just lift our voices right now? If you go, Pastor, I'm not sure about praying out loud. Listen, start praying out loud. It's okay. Father, we say thank you that your presence was in this place before we even showed up this morning. God, that we are, we are stepping into a sacred space. We are stepping into a space where you have prepared a table for us, that we would feast on your presence. Father, that we would, that we would be able to just be immersed with you. God, that everything else around us may fade away in this moment and that we would be face to face with the beautiful Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you have brought us here. We thank you that you are calling us to this 21 days of commitment to you, that we would consecrate our hearts to you, that we would, that we would devote our time to you, that, that in the way that we live our lives, it would show to not just you, but everybody around us that you are our highest priority. You are our object of affection. It's you and you alone. 
And Father, right now, even, even as we start off this 21 days, we just pray that strongholds, even today, would begin to fall off. God, those things that have been just shackling us down over this last year or two years or five years, God, that, that those things would begin breaking off in Jesus' name. God, we speak against depression right now in Jesus' name. We, we speak against apathy in Jesus' name. Father, we, we call the prodigals back to you in Jesus' name. Lord, the, Lord, that our hearts that have been weighed down, Father, that you would begin to be the, the lifter of our heads, that we would find that joy in you again, Lord. God, that our hearts would be turned back to you and that you would begin to heal this land and that you would heal marriages and that you would heal families. God, that you would heal us. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, before you're seated, turn around, give somebody a high five, tell them you are glad to see them here. If you are watching from all of our other campuses, just want to say good morning. We are so glad you are tuned in, that you got up. If you're at Goose Creek or Monk's Corner or Walter, or wherever you're at, North Campus, Ridgeville, Santee, Fay Hispana, wherever you're at, you, we just want to say Welcome, you are incredible. We're so glad that you are tuned in this morning. Hey, can we just give all of our other campuses uh, just a round of applause? Come on, let's give it up for them. We're so glad they're here. So glad they're here. <clears throat> well, hey, we're going to kick it off right away this morning. And, uh, and I want you to open up your Bibles to Genesis chapter 28. And I hope over these next 21 days and as you, as you come that you bring your Bible, you bring, you bring a notebook, you bring, you bring uh, uh, maybe your notes app or something, but I would just encourage you to be expectant as, as you come. Be prepared to, to write down what the Lord is speaking to you for 2024. 2024, I don't know, when I was like 16 years old, I thought that we'd be having flying cars by now, but we're, we're still where we were. Uh, hey, uh, as we look up... Uh, the term, one of the terms for prayer, because you're, you're, here, you're here not to just worship the Lord, but you're here, you're here to pray. You're here to pray. And so the, I think the greatest thing that can happen in these 21 days is that you learn to pray. And not that you, just that you learn to pray, but that you, that you develop within your life a consistent, a consistency of prayer. And so one of the terms that you find in Scripture when we, when we start talking about prayer and when you start reading about prayer, the term that comes up quite frequently is this term intercession. And now in, in English, this term intercession means uh, the act of intervening on behalf of another. The act of intervening on behalf of another. But in, 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 in the Hebrew context, the word is, the, in Hebrew the word is paga. Paga, P-A-G-A, paga. And, and this is, it's, it's an incredible word because in, in the Hebrew context, the word paga has uh, over a dozen different nuances. It can be used in, in just a dozen different ways. And, and one of the ways that we're going to be talking about today is, is uh, paga is a meeting place. When you, when you find the paga being used in scriptures, it's, it, it often refers to a meeting place. And so when we start talking about intercession, when we start talking about prayer, you, you, are, you are establishing a meeting place. And so I'm going to make it super simple for you this morning. Uh, there's, there's a couple different things um, about intercession I just want you to remember. The first thing is this, that there's a place of intercession. A place of intercession. I want to make this really simple because if you're, if you're like, man, this is my first time at 21 days of prayer and fasting, or this is my first time at, of, of, of really just engaging in this at a campus level, or, or maybe you're at home and you're watching this and you go, man, I, I, I need to... I need, to, I need to figure out how to do this thing. The first thing you need to do is set a place of intercession, a place, a meeting. When you, when you, typically, when you set a meeting with somebody, what do you do? Hey, uh, I, I'm going to meet you at what time and what place? Do you want to get lunch? Sure, let's get lunch. Let's meet at this time at this place. And what you're doing right now in this season of prayer and fasting is saying at this, at this time and at this place, I am meeting with the Lord. I, I am setting a time and a place. And so in, in the scriptures, we find this in, in Genesis chapter 28, verse 10. It says that Jacob left Beersheba and he went towards Haran. And he came to a certain place, the term certain place, Paga, a meeting place. Now here's the thing. When, when Jacob showed up at this certain place, he, he wasn't aware that he, was, that he even had a meeting with the Lord. And that, this is what I love about God and his, his, his love for us. 
that, that he so loves us and he so passionately pursues us that he will set a meeting place with us before we even realize that we need a meeting place. You know, sometimes you, you, you may have grown up um, scheduling family meetings. Like you, you and your spouse may say, hey, we need to have a meeting with our kids or we need to have a family meeting. And, and your kids don't know the meeting is happening, but then they walk in the room and you're saying, hey, we're having a family meeting. They are stepping into a meeting that was planned without them even knowing it. And sometimes with the Lord, his compassion and his love for us, that he will set up a, 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 a space for us to step into. And he's already prepared something for us in that space. And I believe as you showed up this morning, as you showed up at your campuses, that there is, there is already something that the Lord has prepared for you in that space. And you're not sure what it is yet. And, and, and Jacob wasn't sure what it, is, what it was when he arrived at this certain space. But for him, it was just an ordinary space. He stayed there that night because the sun had set. It was nothing spectacular. It was getting dark. I want to find a, a, a place to sleep. But as he was laying there, taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. Verse 12, and he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to the heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending, descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring. He had a promise for him in that place. The Lord has a promise for you, I think, during this 21 days of prayer and fasting. He has a promise for you. And one of those promises is, is quite simple. Uh, when you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all of your heart. It's a promise that he's prepared for you. When you seek me, you will find. It was, this isn't, if you do this, I will do this. I will, I will show myself to you. There's a promise that God has for you. And I think this is part of the the joy and excitement and, and anticipation of 21 days of prayer and fasting is that you begin to, as we begin to seek the Lord, he begins to reveal things to us that, that we didn't even know he was doing. He, that he's, he's begun opening our eyes to see what he is he's doing in the spiritual realm. And so he has a promise for him. And in verse 15, uh, it says, Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. I love that. I, I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And part of showing up every single day for 21 days of prayer and fasting is, is going, God, I'm not going to leave until I see you do what you have promised me. And the beautiful thing is over the course of the year, you'll see God's promises unfold. And you'll begin to, to look back at 21 days in, of prayer and fasting when you're in July and August and September. And you'll say, man, I remember that God spoke this promise to me way back then, and he's been faithful to complete it, and he's begun to reveal it to me. It says, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. When you step into a space as a follower of Jesus, you step into a, a space that may be profane. It may be a space that's secular. But when you carry the presence of God into that space, it now becomes a sacred space. And people around you that are, are near you and begin seeing your life and how it transforms during these 21 days, they, they may say, surely the Lord was in this place. And we didn't even know it. That they will show up at work and experience God. That they will show up uh, at your home and experience the presence of God. That whenever they're around you, they'll begin experiencing the presence of God. And they won't know why but it'll be because God is doing something in you during these 21 days of prayer and fasting that's transformational. So there's a place of intercession. You set the place, but then there's also a person of intercession. A person of intercession. Dutch Sheets said it this way. Uh, he said, our prayers of intercession must be offered through the person of intercession. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Genesis, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, brethren, we have confidence to enter, the holy, to enter the holy place, how? By the blood of Jesus. 1 John 2, 1. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ of righteousness. 1 Timothy 2, 5. There is one God and one mediator also between God and men. That is Jesus 
Christ. There is a place of intercession, but there's also a person of intercession. And so I want to encourage you today to begin praying the prayers that are on your heart and even the prayers that God will begin to drop into your spirit. I want you to begin praying those prayers in the name of in the name of Jesus. Listen, this isn't formulaic. This isn't a way to manipulate God to get what you want. This is simply a, 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 a legal agreement that God has made between, between man and himself that if you're gonna pray, it's gonna be through my son Jesus. Well, why is it praying through my son Jesus? Because it's through your, his son Jesus that you've, you've received eternal life. It's through his son Jesus that your sins have been forgiven and that you've been redeemed and you've been set free and you've been, you've, you've been positioned in this place, and so God is saying, it's through my son's sacrifice that you've been saved, so it's actually through my son that I want you to pray. And so as, as we are here, we're, we're, we're focusing on the Lord, but I want you to focus on Jesus. I want, you to, I want you to pray through Jesus. I want you to thank Jesus for his sacrifice. Listen, we are here to meet with him. He's our mediator. He's, he is interceding. It's intercession. He is interceding for you. He's going to the Father saying, hey, Johnny is praying for this. Here's here's what he's happening. I know Johnny is, you know, he's he's a piece of work. But look, he loves you and he is good. He is good. And and, and, and Father, I want you to act on behalf of Johnny. God, I want you, Father, I want you to be able to to answer this prayer. I want you to be able to move in this place. And, And I want you to begin praying these prayers, but also praying these prayers with boldness. Here's the thing, there are some things that have not happened in your life because you have not prayed for them. God has has created a scenario where he's willing to partner with you, with where you are, and and, and you may go, I've been hoping for these things, and I've been wishing for some of these things, and and the reality is they haven't happened because, just because you have not been praying for them. You haven't been setting that place of intercession. You haven't been going through that person of intercession. And so you become, man, pastor, my prayers don't seem to be answered. But, but in reality, you haven't been praying. Statistically, we know in, 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 in the United States of America, uh, almost, I think it's like 80-some percentile don't pray at all throughout the course of a week. And those are, those are Christians. And so we, we, need to, we need to position ourselves at this place, and you've already done that. You're here at the place of intercession. You set a place. If you're home, in your living room watching this right now, or if you're at work at lunch watching this later in the day, you set a place of intercession. I want to encourage you today to meet the person of intercession. Seek Jesus this morning. Can we stand to our feet uh, at our campuses and, and all over this place? Jeremiah 33 says, call to me. Call to me. Call to me. Call to me. God's saying, call to me. Call out to me, and I will answer you. Call to me, and I will answer you. If you've ever tried to call somebody over and over again, they just don't pick up the phone, and how frustrating it can be because you're trying to get a hold of that person, and they're not answering the phone. It can get really frustrating, but Jesus says, God says, call to me, and I will answer you. And not only will I answer you, I'm I'm gonna show you great and unsearchable things that you don't even know. God's going to reveal something to you, I believe, during this 21 days of prayer and fasting. He's going to peel back the curtain, and he's going to give you this glimpse into the spiritual realm, and you're going to begin seeing what God is, has been, been doing in your life that, that you haven't even been aware of. Listen, there are some things that God wants to uproot in you. There, you're, you're fasting because you're, you're starving your flesh and you're feeding your spirit. You say, I'm, I'm, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to, to, to give up these things because, God, I want to make room for you, for you to do the work in me. One of the other uh, nuances of paga intercession means to hit the mark. And as you're praying, you may say, well, I'm, I'm still trying to get this prayer thing down, Pastor. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to pray for for the next 30 minutes. It's okay. We want you to pray. And here's the thing. You may not always feel like you're hitting the mark with your prayers, but, but Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says this, likewise in the Spirit, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what, know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with us with groanings too deep for words. So even in these moments as you're praying, when you're like, I just don't even know what to pray, here, here's what you can be joyful and happy about, that, that, 
even as you are, your, 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 your language isn't catching up with what you feel in your heart, the Holy Spirit is still interceding because he knows what's on your heart. He begins to intercede between, between you and, and, and fumbling over the words to speak. He begins interceding between you and the Holy, the Holy Father. He begins talking for you. And so if you feel like you're not missing, if you feel like you're missing the mark, I would encourage you, just start praying in the Spirit. Just walk around, start praying in the Spirit. If you haven't received your spiritual language, I pray that this is something you're, you are chasing after in 2024. That God, I want, I want more of you. If there's more of you, God, I want it. That's where you're positioning yourself for today. Father, we thank you uh, that, that we have set this meeting space over these 21 days, Lord, that, that every single day the, the appointment has been made. place of intercession is set the person of intercession is ready Jesus we just want to see you I think if I'm honest I've had enough of myself God I just need to see you we need to see you so father would you would you in our personal time would you speak as we pray the prophet of Elisha would you open would you open our eyes so that we may see? We thank you, Jesus, for this time together. In your name I pray. Amen. I want to encourage you to walk around, to pray. You can use the lobby. You can use your seat. If you're at a campus, you can move around. I encourage you to, to, to move around uh, and, and, and begin listening to what the Lord is speaking to you. God bless you. We're going to dismiss you to your personal time of prayer.
all just come together uh, wherever you are if you could just come on down we're going to gather here around <clears throat> the altar and if you're at a campus we encourage you maybe just to gather around uh, the front of your your auditorium at your altar space we're going to we're going to take the next seven eight minutes here and we are we're going to <clears throat> have some corporate intercession each day when you when you show up, we're going to worship, we're going to have some personal prayer time, but then we're going to have some corporate prayer time. And this is where we get to get to gather together to intercede for the same thing together. That, that all of our voices will be lifted up towards this, this singular directive. <clears throat> One of the things that matters most to the Lord, I always say that if you want to, you want God to answer your prayers, begin praying prayers that God wants to answer. And, and I think one of the prayers that God wants to answer is for lost souls. And so right now, if you, as you just close your eyes, I want you, or even at the campuses, just close your eyes right now. I want you to begin thinking of, of one, two, three, five people that are in your life that don't know Jesus. They don't know it. They haven't re received from him. There's, it, do you see them? Can you picture them? Do you, do you see their faces? We're going we're gonna to take the next few minutes here, and we're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for the lost this morning. So would you just lift your voice with me, Father, right now? We just pray for those who have been blinded by the, the, the prince of this world, Lord, that they don't see you. They, they haven't experienced, they haven't, they haven't tasted and know that it's so good to be with you. They don't know what it means to, to live free. They don't know what it means to have their, their sins forgiven and have the weight of those sins lifted. They don't know what it is, Lord. So we just pray. We come to this place of intercession, and we and we seek the person of intercession that you would that you would free them. That Father, the first prayer that we pray is that you would open their eyes to see. We pray that you would open their eyes to see their depravity, their their lost state. That you would open their eyes to see that there is a world that exists beyond themselves. We I pray that you'd open their eyes to see a loving Father, a loving Savior that has come and sacrificed his life so that they may walk in liberty and freedom and joy, Father. We pray that you would open their eyes to see. Father, I pray that you would send believers to them, that you would send us to them. Lord, that you would surround them with these serendipitous in encounters, that they would encounter people that, that know you, that have been following you. Father, I pray that you would give people that they don't know prophetic words to speak over their lives. That, 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 that these prophetic words would, would pierce so deeply inside them, they would, they would be, begin to question where they are in relationship to eternity, and that they would turn to you. Father, we pray that you would give us boldness. God, that we wouldn't just ask that, that other people would go to reach these people, but God, that you would send us, that we would pray the prayer of Isaiah, Lord, that here am I, God, send me. Don't pass me up, God. Don't, don't move away from me and send somebody else. God, I pray that you would send me. God, I'm positioning, that we would position ourselves to be used by you, God. That breakthrough would happen. Yes, Father, we pray for breakthrough in their lives. I, I pray that they would see the miraculous. I pray that they would see the supernatural. I pray that they would see those things of the Lord that, that are undeniable, God, that when they see them, they would know there has to be a God, there has to be a Lord. And Father, that their hearts would be turned to you for those who have been so hardened, for those who have been hurt, for those who have deconstructed their faith. Father, I pray that you would show love to them in this season. I pray that you would take that heart of stone, that heart that has been turned away from your, the bride of Christ. I pray that you, would, that you would begin softening that heart once again. Lord, as they get into your presence, as they experience you, Father, I pray that, that the tears would start to flow again. God, that you would help us to find our tears again in your presence. Father, that we would be comfortable weeping in the presence of God. That we would be comfortable interceding in the presence of God. That we would be comfortable laying ourselves prostrate on the floor before a holy God and saying, Lord, you are worthy of all of our praise, all of our glory, all of our honor. Father, you're worthy of it all. God, we pray for opportunity. We pray for opportunity, Lord, that you, would, that you would place us in the right place at the right time. 
that we would encounter people that don't know you and that they would walk away saying, surely the Lord was in this place and I didn't even know it. God, that you would position us, that we would be so attuned to your voice, that we'd be so attuned to what you are doing in the spiritual realm. God, that it would almost become second nature to ask what you would have us to do today. That each day when we would wake up, God, that our first prayer would not be of our wants and our desires and our ambitions, but that our first prayer every single morning would be, Father God, what do you want to speak? God, what do you want me to pray for? Let me set aside my own prayers for, God, what do you want me to intercede for? Who do you want me to intercede for? What do you want me to intercede for? God, I am your mouthpiece in this place. Would you use me to pray and seek and break through, Father? We pray for those who are battling with addiction. In Jesus' name, Father, those who have, have felt completely hopeless, that all is lost, that they've tried over and over and over again for breakthrough. But Father, I pray in this season of prayer and fasting that breakthrough would happen. That, 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 that the physical addiction would be, would be broken off of them, Lord. That, the, that the, the mindset would be shattered and they would begin looking at life in a completely different perspective. God, we thank you for what you can do in a moment in your presence. In a moment, Father God, you can transform everything. And we're not giving you just a moment. We're giving it all to you this, this year, Lord. We're giving you, we, we're setting our heart before you, Lord, and just declaring, God, would you do what you want to do in this place? We're tired of doing it on our own, God. It's, not, it's gotten us nowhere, Father. We need you. We need your presence. Father, we pray for every single Sunday service, every single campus, Right now, Father, I pray that there would be a different atmosphere in this place. I pray when people walk in this coming Sunday, Lord, that they would sense something different, that they would surely, they would walk through and go, man, there's something, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Father, that there would be a, there would be a moment of, of rendering to you, God, that, that you would stoke those fires of revival once again, that our hearts would be, would be turned back to you, Lord. God, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for the, the hundreds of people that are praying through all of our campuses right now and interceding. We thank you, Father. We thank you that this will be a year of breakthrough in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, God bless you, church. Thank you so much for showing up this morning. We have just begun. I pray that you carry the presence of the Lord with you everywhere you go. God bless you. Have a great, great day in the Lord. Hey, thank you once again for joining us. Before I let you go, remember that January 21st is Encounter Night, a chance for your public declaration and symbolizing your new life in Christ through water baptism. Have a blessed rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.